Got another batch of bonding and structure past exam questions you can test yourself using. So if you want to have a go, the link to the questions is in the description. So download them, have a go, and then watch the video for the answers. Okay, so question one, you see I've drawn some shape diagrams to explain this one. So basically we're looking for a molecule that's totally symmetrical and all the dipoles are going to cancel out as a result. So basically these three here are all unsymmetrical molecules and so there will be overall dipoles on these molecules so these will all be polar. This is completely symmetrical. All the dipoles in the SF bonds are going to cancel and so the answer is A. Question two, so I've just knocked up a sketch of the information. Two bonding pairs, two lone pairs. I've got that round there. The shape and angle associated with that combination is nonlinear, 104.5 degree angle. So it was B. Question three, I'm sure everyone remembers diamond structure and bonding is giant covalent. And so therefore, so will silicon dioxide. Question four, you'll notice I've put a little checklist up there. So I tell my students always, you've got to include these points. Uh, if you're asked about a, a shape of molecule question. So we've got to state the total number of electron regions around the central atom. What type are they? Are they bonding regions or lone pairs? What kind of repulsion we're going to get between the electron regions? Will it be identical or will it be different due to lone pairs? And then go into your statements about um, the strength of repulsion. And then there'll be an associated shape and angle with each combination. So in this question, all I've got to do is explain the octahedral shape. So we've got six electron regions around that central sulfur. They're all bonding regions, so the repulsion is going to be equal. We don't have to give the shape, we don't have to give the angle, so I'm stopping there. Question four, the main intermolecular force in these two group five hydrides. Well, in ammonia NH3, you've got a nitrogen directly bonded to a hydrogen. And so that's that's one of the um, ways you can get hydrogen bonding. The other two is an O directly bonded to an H or an F directly bonded to an H. So it's going to be hydrogen bonding for this one. I've just quickly drawn a dot and cross diagram there for the pH 3 molecule. Um, you can see we've got a lone pair there. So that's going to make this molecule polar. So therefore it's going to have permanent dipole intermolecular forces. Next part of the question is just testing our knowledge of the relative strengths of the intermolecular forces. So why would pH3 have a lower boiling point than NH3? So we just need to say permanent dipole, permanent dipole intermolecular forces are weaker than hydrogen bonds. Next part of the question, we've got to come up with the FBF angle in both of those molecules. So you'll notice there I've drawn up two dot and cross diagrams and once you've got that you can see how many electron regions you're dealing with around the central atom. So in the BF3 molecule you've got one, two, three electron regions so they're all bonding regions, repulsion's equal and so the angle will be 120 degrees. Um, and then in the other molecule you'll notice because of this date of covalent bond between the N and the B We've now got four electron regions around there. They're all bonding regions, and so they will repel equally, and you get the 109.5 degree angle. And for the final part of the question, we've got a comment on the um, difference in angle HNH bond angle in ammonia versus this molecule here. So we're told the angle in ammonia is 107, and that's down to the fact that you've got four electron regions so your starting angle is that 109.5 but you've got three bonding regions and a lone pair so you get extra repulsion from the lone pair and that sort of squeezes the hydrogens close together slightly by about two and a half degrees and that's where that 107 comes from in the this molecule here you've got around this nitrogen you've now got four bonding regions so this lone pair is now a, a bonding pair Okay, so the repulsion is now equal, and so you get that 109.5 degree angle, which is obviously greater than the 107. So in terms of an answer, I'd say something like this. The four electron regions around the nitrogen in that big molecule are all bonding regions, so the repulsion is equal. 
However, in ammonia, there are three bonding regions and one lone pair. So I'm stating the type of electron regions and the extra repulsion from the lone pair. That's what causes that reduction of the angle down to 107. Question five, you'll see again, there's my checklist. We've got to predict the shape of a molecule of SBCl3. We've been given the dot and cross diagram, which is helpful. So the total number of electron regions, one, two, three, four, type of electron regions, three bonding, one lone. What kind of repulsion have we got? We're going to have unequal repulsion due to the increased repulsion from the lone pair. And we've got to then come up with the shape. We don't have to explain the angle. The shape for that would be pyramidal. So just like ammonia, that's kind of a standard one that I always get students to remember, the shape of the common molecules. So pyramidal shape, four electron regions around the antimony, the SB, three bond and one lone. And the important thing just to say is the, these electron regions repel. And for the last part of the question, you'll see I've drawn the shape diagram just to help explain this. So SBCl3 has a pyramidal shape, we've already said there. Um, across each of these bonds, there'll be a dipole because they've got different electronegativities. And because of the lone pair, it's kind of knocking the symmetry out of the molecule. And that means that the, the dipoles can't cancel each other out. And therefore, there will be an overall dipole on the molecule and therefore it's polar. So in terms of marks, we just need to say about the different electronegativity values causing the dipoles in the bonds and they don't cancel because of the lack of symmetry. Question six, solid, you'll see I've underlined there, solid chlorine and solid bromine have a similar structure. So all solids have a lattice structure and we hopefully know that chlorine and bromine, because they're simple molecules, they have a simple molecular structure. So the answer will be simple molecular lattice. Part B, I've just written up a sort of bullet point form. The key things to explain induced dipole-dipole forces. Um, you've got to talk about the uneven distribution of electrons. So at any one moment in time, the electron density is unevenly distributed. That causes an instantaneous dipole, or you could call it a temporary dipole. You can even call it a fluctuating dipole because it's kind of flicking backwards and forwards. So you've got this instantaneous dipole and then that has a knock-on effect on a neighbouring molecule. It induces a dipole in a neighbouring molecule. So obviously there's a mark for each of those statements. And then the final part of the question is asking us to explain the difference in the boiling points of uh, bromine and chlorine. It's all down to the number of electrons because the more electrons in a molecule, the stronger you induce dipole-dipole forces. So something like this would do. Bromine's got more electrons than chlorine. It's therefore got stronger induced dipoles between the molecules and so more energy is needed to overcome the intermolecular forces. Whatever you say, do not talk about breaking covalent bonds. That is the most common thing I see. So don't talk about that. And the final question, got to complete the diagram to show the hydrogen bond between the water molecule that they've drawn and one other, including relevant dipoles and lone pairs, and label the hydrogen bond. Okay, so I'm going to draw my other water molecule up here. So the dipoles they want are delta plus on the hydrogens, delta minus on the oxygens, Put the lone pairs on the oxygen. And the hydrogen bond's got to go from the lone pair on the oxygen in this case to hydrogen of a neighbouring molecule. So we'll just say hydrogen bond against that. And the final, final question. State and explain two anomalous properties of ice. So not water, but ice caused by hydrogen bonding. So the first one I'm going to go for is the fact that ice is less dense than water. That's why ice floats. And it's because when water freezes, the hydrogen bonds extend and it pushes the water molecules further apart. And it gives it what's called an open lattice structure. So something like that would be absolutely fine. And the other property I'm going to talk about is the higher than expected melting point. Remember, we're talking about ice, not water. So the higher than expected melting point of ice, and that's due to the fact that extra energy is required to overcome these relatively strong hydrogen bonds. 
So in terms of marks for that, we'll just go for a mark for the property and a mark for the explanation.